we're going to start taking a look at confidence intervals. Now before we actually get into the interval, we're going to first talk about what a point estimate is. And what it is is when you use a sample to make an estimate about a population, and it's a particular point, so if we're talking about the mean, for instance, that would be a point estimate, because we use a statistic to estimate the corresponding parameter. Um, it's very common to use point estimates, especially for the means, because a lot of times we can't gather all the information that we might need for a population. Maybe the population is too big, maybe it would cost too much, maybe uh, if we uh, did the entire population we wouldn't have a product left, like if we were um, testing the diameters of a baseball and we had to cut them all in half, well if we did the entire population you wouldn't have any baseballs left. So a lot of times we will use a statistic which is um, information from just a sample and we will use that to estimate the parameter which would be the information for the population. Most of the time there is going to be some sampling error and we ta have talked about that already before where when you use a sample to estimate a population you're probably not going to be right on. There's going to be an error that comes from using just a sample. So what we will do a lot of times is we will come up with a confidence interval. Now our confidence interval estimate, what it is, is it's our confidence interval which is the range of numbers. So if we have we do our calculations and we find out that the mean is between 100 to 200, that's our confidence interval. Now to go along with the confidence interval, we have the confidence level, and that's the percent confident that we are. So um, if we were doing a particular problem and it wanted us to be at the 90% confidence level, that would be our, our CL, our confidence level. Now when you put that all together, it's your confidence interval and your confidence level together that gives us our confidence interval estimate. So if we took these last two examples up here and put them together in, a, in an interpretation or a phrase, regardless of what our situation is, um, we could say we are 90% confident that mu is between 100 and 200. Now when we're actually working with a problem, we would want to put more specifics in there as far as what we're talking about. So we're 90% confident that the mean of the whatever our topic is lies between 100 and 200. But that's basically what a confidence interval estimate is. It takes your confidence interval, so the range of numbers, puts it together with the confidence level, and that's how confident you want to be, puts it into a phrase. So here's going to be an example we're going to do. So let's say we have a random sample of the cost of 45 weddings and we need to first obtain a point estimate for the population mean. Now right up here I told you that sigma of x sub i is 608,580. What that is telling us is that the sum of all my x values. Now this first part wants us to obtain a point estimate for the population mean. Basically what that's telling us to do is to calculate the sample mean, so find our x-bar and use x-bar to estimate the population mean. Well, the reason I gave you the sum of these numbers is because in order to find x-bar you have to add them all up and divide by how many you have. So we need to take that 608,580, we need to divide that by 45 to get our mean, and when you do that, the mean is 13,524. So this right here would be our point estimate, 13,524, because we took some sample data and we used it to estimate the mean. Okay, the second part says determine a 93% confidence interval for the population mean. So now since it wants the confidence interval, it wants that range of numbers. We have actually already done these types of problems, but we just didn't call them this. What this looks like is we're going to have a normal curve, and the reason I know it's normal is that um, uh, CLT theorem tells me as long as I have a sample greater than 30, my sample means are going to be normally distributed. So I know I'm going to have a fairly normal distribution. I know that mu sub 
x bar is also equal to my mu, and that's going to be right down the center. And now I need to do a 93% confidence interval for the population mean. Now since I want a 93% confidence interval, that tells me that the area I want under the normal curve is 0.93, and I want it to be this middle 0.93 right here. So what I really have to think about is I have to think about, well, what z-score gives me my values. Once I get my z-scores, then I'm going to change that into a data value. Now remember, when I'm looking for an area under the curve, I need to use my table 2. But keep in mind, table 2 is only written in terms of areas to the left. Well, this is an area between. So now what I have to think about is how can I maybe find this area to the left here? And one thing you want to think about is that if 0.93 is in the middle, take 1 minus that 0.93 and I get 0 0.07. So that means 0 0.07 is spread out between the top and the bottom. Well now since this is symmetrical and it's the normal curve which means it's perfectly balanced, I know that half of that 0 0.07 has to be above it. So 0 0.035 area is above it. And the other half, 0 0.035 area, is below it. So in order to find my bottom z-score here, I need to look for the area of 0 0.035 in my table 2. You always have to remember to first do your picture in terms of areas to the left. Now when you're looking for an area of 0 0.035 in table 2, you look on the inside part of it. Remember the areas are the numbers on the inside of the table, the z-scores are the numbers around the outside of the table. So you're going to look for the number as close to 0 0.035 as you can possibly get. Might not be perfect, but it's going to be pretty close. Once you find that, you should have found it to be a z-score of negative 1.81. So that tells me my z-score for this lower one is negative 1.81. Now if you think about our um, standard deviation rules for one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations, remember that within one standard deviation is about 68%. Within two standard deviations is 95%. So it makes sense that our z-score is really close to negative 2 and positive 2. And also remember that since our normal curve is symmetrical, since my lower z-score was negative 1.81, my upper z-score is going to be a positive 1.81. So now I have found my z-scores. Then I need to do this last step here, and I need to convert it to data. Now when I convert it to data, I'm going to be using my general setup for my z-score formula but it's going to have to be modified a little bit because with this formula when I use mu and sigma that's implying that I have a population and I do not have population information so instead mu is going to become x bar so I would do x minus x bar and sigma is actually going to be sigma sub x bar now we learned a while ago how to find sigma sub x bar well, if you don't remember, sigma sub x bar is our population standard deviation divided by our square root of n. Okay, now this problem I haven't told you what our population standard deviation is yet because I forgot. So I am going to go ahead and tell you that our population standard deviation is going to be 5,205. So now I can use my information to find my sigma sub x bar. So if I come down here and I do sigma of x bar is going to be equal to that 5,205 divided by my square root of n. Now remember n is your sample size, so it would be the 45. When I go ahead and divide that out, I end up getting... 
775.9. So this is the sigma I'm going to be using. Because I'm dealing with sample data, I have got to use my sample standard deviation. Now I can go ahead and use my z-score formula that I have up here, and I can figure out my actual data point. So I'm going to plug in the 1.81 for my z-score, so I would have 1.81 equals x minus, now my x-bar I found up here in that first point estimate, so 13,524 divided by, I just found my sample standard deviation to be 775.9 and now I can perform the algebra to figure out the x. Well, in order to solve this, I need to take both sides times 775.9 in order to get rid of it on the right side. And then I'm up left with 1404.4 is equal to x minus that 13,524. Well, in order to get rid of that minus 13,000, I have to add 13,524 to both sides. And when I end up doing that, I end up getting my x value is equal to 14,928.38. So that's my upper data point here. And it's the upper one because I used the positive 1.81. Now to get my lower one, I'm going to come back to this point right here, and instead of putting in my positive z-score of 1.81, I'm going to put in my negative z-score of 1.81. So now in order to do this, I would still do the same algebra processes. I would multiply both sides by 775.9, and when I do that I get negative 1404.4, and then I need to still add that 13,524. And for my lower data point, I get 12,119.62. Now, if you think back to the problem we were trying to do, we were trying to do a 93% confidence interval for the population mean. Well, our confidence interval is between $12,119.62 and $14,928.38. So right here would be our confidence interval. Now the last part says interpret your results. Well for that, what we would say is that we are 93% confident that the mean wedding cost is between $12,119.62 and uh, $14,928.38. So if you look back at the problem, the first issue was that I didn't give you the population mean, and we need that for right now, so I had to add that to the problem. But then when we wanted the point estimate, that was basically just finding my x-bar. Then we wanted the confidence interval. Well, the first thing I did was sketch a picture, and I put that 93% in the middle. Then I had to calculate, well, the area below. In order to do that, I took my 1 minus that 0.93, because that tells me how much area is left over, split that in half to get how much was below down here and how much was above up here. Then I looked up that point zero three five in table two, found my z scores, and then plugged that into my z score formula. But I had to remember to use my standard deviation for my sample when I was doing my z score formula because I'm using sample sample data. When I did my z score formula, I got the twelve thousand one hundred nineteen and the fourteen thousand nine hundred twenty eight, and that was my interval for my population. All of your problems for confidence intervals are going to find, follow the same general process. You're going to want to sketch a picture. That way you can see the values that you need. We could see that the area to the left here was 0 .035, which let us 
use table two correctly.